death-like complexions surviving severe injuries drinking animal grease the Wendigo is a mythological creature or evil spirit originating from Algonquian folklore. This concept has been widely utilized in literature and various forms of art, including social commentary and horror fiction. Often described as a spirit with human-like characteristics, the Wendigo is believed to possess humans, instilling in them an insatiable hunger, a desire to consume human flesh. Some depictions portray the Wendigo as a giant humanoid with a heart of ice, heralded by a foul stench or an unseasonable chill. Welcome to the place where you'll find your perfect accommodation. If you're the owner of a hotel, motel, or a similar establishment, don't hesitate to reach out for a potential collaboration. In modern psychiatry, Wendigo psychosis refers to a disorder characterized by an intense craving for human flesh and a fear of becoming a cannibal. Within some First Nations communities, symptoms of Wendigo psychosis also include insatiable greed and environmental destruction. The Wendigo is a malevolent, cannibalistic supernatural being found in the traditional beliefs of several Algonquin-speaking peoples, including the Ojibwe, Salto, Cree, Niscopi, and Inu. Associated with winter, the north, coldness, famine, and starvation, Wendigos are described as gaunt, emaciated figures with ashy, death-like complexions and deep-set eyes. They emit an eerie odor of decay and are characterized by their insatiable hunger. Wendigos grow in size with each person they consume, embodying gluttony, greed, and excess. Despite their monstrous nature, Wendigos may retain human cognitive abilities, including speech, and can taunt or threaten their victims. Stories depict them as being capable of using tools, surviving severe injuries, and even consuming their own flesh. In some traditions, humans consumed by greed could transform into Wendigos, using the myth to promote cooperation and moderation. Other sources suggest that Wendigos were created when a person resorted to cannibalism for survival. Additionally, humans could become Wendigos by prolonged contact with them. Among the Assiniboine, Cree, and Ojibwe, a satirical ceremonial dance known as Wendigokan Timoan is sometimes performed during times of famine to emphasize the seriousness of the Wendigo taboo. This ceremony involves wearing masks and dancing backward around a drum. The last known Wendigo ceremony in the United States took place at Lake Wendigo on Star Island in Cass Lake, within the Leech Lake Indian Reservation in northern Minnesota. Historical accounts of Wendigo psychosis describe individuals becoming possessed by the Wendigo spirit often after resorting to cannibalism due to extreme hunger. A 1661 Jesuit report detailed people afflicted with an insatiable hunger for human flesh, leading to violent cannibalism. Treatment in Cree folklore sometimes included consuming fatty animal meats or drinking animal grease, causing the patient to vomit ice as part of the cure. Notable cases include Swift Runner, a Plains Cree trapper who cannibalized his family, and Jack Fiddler, an Aji Cree chief known for killing those afflicted by Wendigo psychosis. Fiddler and his brother were arrested for homicide in 1907, Jack committed suicide, and Joseph died in prison after being granted a posthumous pardon. The phenomenon of Wendigo psychosis has been debated, with some researchers dismissing it as a fabrication, while others cite credible eyewitness accounts as evidence of its historical reality. The frequency of Wendigo psychosis cases significantly decreased in the 20th century as boreal Algonquian people adopted more sedentary lifestyles and European ideologies. James Waldrum, in his 2004 treatise, Revenge of the Wendigo, asserted that no actual cases of Wendigo psychosis have been studied and criticized the perpetuation of this concept in literature. Despite this, the notion of Wendigo psychosis persists, often cited as an example of how scholarly professions have constructed aboriginal mental disorders. The ICD-10 classifies Wendigo as a culture-specific disorder, describing it through historic accounts of cannibalistic obsession. Some recent studies challenge the legitimacy of the syndrome, suggesting that reported cases were actually due to hostile accusations rather than genuine mental illness. Deficiencies in certain nutrients related to near starvation may have contributed to conditions resembling psychosis, possibly giving rise to the Wendigo myth. The Wendigo, beyond being a cannibalistic monster in traditional folklore, is also understood conceptually by some Native Americans. It symbolizes any person, idea, 
or movement driven by self-aggrandizing greed and excessive consumption, leading to disharmony and destruction. Ojibwe scholar Brady DeSanti describes the Wendigo as a marker of internal and communal imbalance, causing individuals afflicted by its spirit to disrupt ecological balance. Chippewa author Louise Erdrich's novel, The Round House, illustrates this through a character whose crimes label him a Wendigo, threatening the reservation's safety. The Wendigo also metaphorically represents destructive movements like colonialism, which displaced Native Americans and disrupted the natural world. The 1999 horror film Ravenous further explores this metaphor, equating the Wendigo with American colonialism and manifest destiny, highlighting the destructive consequences of expansion and greed. The concept of the Wendigo extends beyond Native American-European relations and can metaphorically explain any pattern of domination, subjugation, and displacement. Joe Lockhart, an English professor at Arizona State University, argues that Wendigos represent social cannibalism, transcending borders and embodying a universal dark aspect of human nature. Scholar and documentarian Emily Zarka notes that among Algonquian-speaking cultures, the Wendigo represents winter, hunger, and selfishness. The Wendigo thus serves as a powerful symbol of the destructive consequences of excessive greed and disregard for others. One of the earliest appearances of a Wendigo-inspired character in non-indigenous literature is Algernon Blackwood's 1910 novella The Wendigo. Joe Nazer noted that Blackwood's portrayal transformed the Wendigo from a native myth into a template for the Indian savage. Blackwood's work influenced portrayals in horror fiction, such as August Derleth's story, The Thing That Walked on the Wind, which inspired Stephen King's depiction in Pet Cemetery as a evil. These portrayals often diverged from traditional lore, setting the template for later popular culture representations. Thomas Pynchon's 1959 short story, Mortality and Mercy in Vienna, features a character with Wendigo syndrome. In 1973, Marvel Comics introduced a Wendigo-inspired character, created by Steve Englehart and Herb Trimp, as a curse afflicting cannibals, appearing in The Incredible Hulk No. 162. Works exploring the Wendigo legend include Linda K. Hogan's novel Solar Storms, which uses the Wendigo to address themes of independence, spirituality, politics and corporate exploitation. Nathan Negan Nudden Adler's 2016 debut novel Wrist blends the traditional Ojibwe legend with influences from non-indigenous writers. It also appears in various films and TV shows, such as Ravenous from 1999, The Lone Ranger from 2013 and 2021 film Antlers, where it's depicted as a deer-like creature with a never-ending hunger. Guillermo del Toro, producer of Antlers, conceptualized the Wendigo as a creature that grows hungrier and weaker the more it eats. The Wendigo legend also features in role-playing video games like Fallout 76 and the first-person shooter Dusk from 2018, where they appear as cryptid enemies and invisible adversaries, respectively. In the 2021 film The Inhuman, a Wendigo symbolizes inner turmoil from abandoning indigenous heritage for material success. Thank <laughs> you.